Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. We have special guests with us all the way from the United States of America. They haven't been with us since before the COVID pandemic, and we are so excited to have them. They, they are with us for almost, I think, about a month. They, they're with us going to our different campuses, and it's been a great time having them in our high school ministry uh, where we've been traveling to different high schools. We, we've been going to police stations. Uh, we've been going to different university campuses, and we still have a few weeks to go. And uh, we are so thankful that they could join us. Now today, Pastor Bird and Pastor Shanae are at the 20th year, 20th, is that the right way to say it? 20th anniversary of 3C USA. It's their 20th birthday today. And uh, we are so excited for what God has done there. Amen. Uh, so they are ministering there this weekend, but Pastor Bird will be back here next Sunday. And it's incredible to see what's happened uh, in 3C USA, starting in a, in a small room 20 years ago. And today we have five campuses. Um, and even this year, uh, 3C USA managed by the grace of God to secure their own building in Washington, D.C. as well. And so we're thankful to the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for that? Amen. And uh, our pastors there, Pastor Mike and Paula and their family are doing such a tremendous job. Amen. But to the main event of today, all the way from the United States, I have to put this disclaimer out there because some of you have a lot of faith. Please do not try this at home. Tell the person next to you, talking to you. All right. Please do not try this at home. I know some people are going to go after the service and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to see what I can do. No, let the professionals handle it and we stay in our lane. Amen. But anyway, 3C, let's give a warm welcome to Ray and Janet Clark, Third Day Power. They're going to come and minister to us. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Oh, excuse me, this morning. How are you doing? Are you excited to be in the house of God? It's better to be here than in the hospital, right? I said it's better to be here than the hospital, right? Amen, amen. We're excited to be here for those who are online and the many different campuses. We welcome you. Those who are connected, we welcome you. We thank you. We thank, first of all, we thank Pastor Bert and Pastor uh, Charnay for having us once again. Let's give them a big hand clap for having us once again for uh, trusting us, for trusting us, trusting in us and believing in us that uh, we can stand on this platform and, and, uh, and uh, be a blessing to you all. So with that said, uh, as, as uh, Pastor President, my name is Ray. This is my awesome, strong, powerful, beautiful wife, Ms. Janet Abraham Clark, who's actually one of the world's strongest women, all right? Now, typically, typically when we go to different gyms, uh, typically, she's, she's, she's not only the strongest woman in the gym, she's actually one of the strongest, strongest individuals in the gym. Most guys, when they see her get ready to bench, everybody usually stops and watches her because they want to witness her strength. And so I'm glad I'm married to, I'm glad I'm married to one of the strongest women in the world. Praise God. It's a tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. And uh, we thank you also to the pastors, those of us who have, those of you who have, who have driven us around and uh, you have fed us. Praise God. How many of you know we like to eat, especially me? I like lots of steak and lots of chicken. All right, thank you to uh, thank you to that thank you to the anointed restaurant called Nando's. That's my favorite. If you if you want to be a blessing in my life, just bring me some Nando's. You 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 will be a tremendous blessing. And also, my wife loves Dapios. She loves Dapios. Awesome. Now, with that said, I have a half inch steel bar, and um, something that we've been doing for the last uh, over 22 years is taking steel bars and bend them all around and. Uh, right now, I'm going to take this steel bar, and I'm going to bend it around. Um, not once, not twice, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how many times I can bend. Are you guys ready? Wake up! Come on! Yes. I know it's a little hot. Come on! Somebody say God is on my side. Somebody say God is on my side. Say it like you mean it. God is on my side. The blood has been applied. I will enter in the rest because I know I will receive his best and I will pass every test. 
God is on my side. I shall not be denied. Put those hands together. Let's get ready. Come on. All right, can you make some noise? Come on, let me hear you cheer for him. Encourage him. Make some noise. Come on, Ray. Go, Ray, go. Go, go, go. Come on, Ray. Woo! Come on, honey. Come on, Ray, you can do it. Somebody say, you can do it. Come on, Ray. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Come on, 3C. Go, go, go. Come on, Ray. Come on, honey. Keep going. A half inch steel bar. Come on, Ray. Go, go, go. Come on. Keep going. Come on, those of you online, you can cheer too. Listen to my radio. A half inch steel bar. Go, go, go. Come on, Ray. Little bit more. Come on, little bit more. Go, 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 go. Woo, pull. Yes. Woo. Woo. Somebody say, wow. wow. Say, wow backwards. Wow. <laughs> say, wow upside down. Mom. <laughs> you know, as Ray was bending this steel bar, I never get tired of watching him, especially when his muscles are all flexed. <laughs> He's a lifetime drug-free bodybuilder, by the way. No steroids. In case you're wondering, yeah, you can get big and strong. It just takes a lot longer of hard work, dedication, and commitment. Ray is 30 years, over 30 years, he's been working out. And so you can do it. It just takes having a, a commitment and dedication. He's Mr. Universe two times, lifetime drug-free, natural universe. I always tell people that makes me Mrs. Universe. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, this steel bar, it's amazing. If you look at it, it's in the shape of a fish. Christianity, Christ, Jesus. See, you're going to go through some challenges and storms in life. But Jesus said, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He has called us to be fishers of men. And in order to be a fisher of men, you have, Jesus said, you have to follow me. And when we follow him, we have to realize we're going to go through some trials. We're going to go through some storms. We're going to go through some tests. Life's going to take you through some challenges. Do you know that challenges are going to come to the saved and the unsaved, the believer and the unbeliever? Trials and tests, they are a part of life. That's how we grow. That's how our faith is strengthened. And when we realize that we're fishers of men, it means that we have a responsibility and a job to do. And a fisherman has to be patient when there's no fish coming his way. He's got to trust when he puts that lure in the water, whatever he's using to fish, that that fish is going to come to the bait. We are the bait for Jesus. Did you know that? We are just the bait on a string for Jesus. Amen? And the word of God in us is what draws men unto the Lord. Amen? And when we put Jesus first in our lives, we can be successful. You see, storms come and storms go. But if you look at this steel bar, it still has a beginning and an end. And in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says, He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Amen. God is in the perfecting business. Psalms 138 verse 8 says he will perfect those very things that concern you. He is in the perfecting business. Will you take him at his word? You see, God's word is tried, it's tested, and it's true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never fail. Amen? 
And when we take God at his word, it means that his word is planted on the inside of us. You know, our hearts are like soil. Your heart is soil. And when the word of God is planted in our hearts, those of you watching online, it's so important to know where your heart is today. Our heart. God is after our heart because if he has our heart, he has everything. Our treasure is where our heart is. And if you look at your treasures in life, you'll see where your heart is. And I'm reminded of a story in the Bible in Mark chapter 4, verse 1, in the New Living Translation, if you have that. If you have your phones, phone Bibles, um, your paper Bibles, we'll put it up on the screens for you. But if you would turn with me, I want to share a story with you in Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 1. If you could put that up on the screen, please. Jesus loved teaching stories, parables. He loved using illustrations, and that's what we do with the illustrations. It's just a message. It's not about the strength. It's not about the the things that we bend, rip, or break. It's the message in the method. Amen? And Jesus talked uh, to the disciples and the people around. The Bible says there were so many people. In verse 1, once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. He sat in the boat, and all the people remained on the shore. He taught by telling many stories and parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer planted some seed. Everybody say seed. Come on, put your finger up like this and say seed. 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 Just look at your finger. Pretend there's a seed in there. A farmer planted some seed. He scattered it across the field. Some fell on the footpath, and the birds came and ate it. He scattered some, and some fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon withered under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Some other seed fell among the thorns and grew up and choked out the tender plants, and they produced no grain. Still others fell on fertile soil. Everybody say fertile soil. And grew and produced a crop, which was some 30, 60 to 100, as much times as they planted. And then he said, anyone who has ear to hear, let him hear. And they asked him what the parable meant. And Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all others? Excuse me. So in verse 14, Jesus takes the word and he breaks it down. He explains. See, he doesn't leave us clueless. He'll give us a story, a parable, and then he'll explain it so that we can have a revelation. Same thing with God's word. He wants to reveal himself to us, but the seed has to be planted in the soil of our heart and take root. And in chapter 4, verse 14, the farmer plants the seed by taking God's word to others. Somebody say others. You see, first, if we don't have the word in us, we can't give the word to somebody else. Amen? You see... One of my life scriptures that is so close to my heart is John 10.10. The Bible says in John 10.10, the thief, which is the devil, he comes for this very reason. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, to the fullest. Come on now, we want that abundant life, but we don't understand something. That the thief is doing his job. He comes to steal. Let me tell you what he comes to steal. He comes to steal the word. You see, immediately when the first parable, in the parable, the word had fallen on the footpath, the stony ground. The Bible says that immediately in verse 14, Satan came and stole the word. He stole the seed, which was God's word. 
So if the enemy can steal the seed, the word, out of our hearts, he'll kill our faith. If he can kill your faith, he'll destroy your life. Because Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who sometimes, holidays, Sundays, Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, how many times? Diligently. Without faith. You see, if he can steal the word, he'll destroy your faith. He doesn't want you to have faith. So if he can keep you from the word, if he could keep you from church, if he could keep you from cell, if he could keep you from your leader, guess what he's doing? He's trying to steal the word so he can kill your faith and destroy your life, your family, your home, your marriage, your relationships. That's what he wants to do. We're here to tell you what the enemy's tactics are today. So, looking back at the parable in Mark 4.14, if you can put that on the screen, please. The sower sows the word. Next verse. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. They hear. Satan comes. When? I'm sorry, what was that? Immediately and takes away the word that was sown into their hearts. He can steal the word from your heart if you let him. Because you let it go in one ear and out the other. The next verse. Likewise, there are ones sown on stony ground. They hear the word immediately. They receive it. Yes, praise the Lord. I'm giving my life to Jesus today. Oh, yes, I'm a Christian. Next verse. And they have no root. And they only endure for a time. And afterward, when tribulation and persecution arises for the, for the what? Oh man, the first service did better than you. When persecution and tribulation arise for the word. You see, the word has to have persecution and tribulation to grow. So if you have the word in you and you're wondering why you're going through trials and tribulations, it's for the word's sake so that the word can grow and become strong and alive and living in abundant victory in your life. You see, persecution will cause you to either choke or to grow. And when it's your time to grow, baby, you look at some weeds climbing up the stairs. Even weeds don't let the cement stop it. When it's its time, it'll find a crack in the cement because it says there ain't nothing going to keep me down. I'm not going to let whatever's trying to cover me bury me. You see, even weeds find a place to grow when it's their time. We got to be stronger than a weed. And the Bible says in the next verse, I'm coming to a close. Now, after these, some are, some are sown among the thorns. They're the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of things entering and choke the word. When our eyes are not focused on the word in the Lord, the Bible says that the deceitfulness of the world, the worldly things, the riches of this world choke the word. Do you know that the lifestyle we live sometimes chokes Jesus out of our lives? Because he is the word living on the inside of us. And when we put our cares in the world, we're choking Jesus. We're not allowing him to breathe and live life on the inside of us. We have to be careful of the soil of our hearts. And lastly, the last verse. The last verse, my license plate, honey, I'm going to do the license plate. It becomes unfruitful. Are you unfruitful? Last 
last verse. But these are the ones sown on the good ground. They hear the word and they accept it. They accept it and they bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and a hundredfold. Will you be a heart that has good soil, that will hear the word, that will take the word, and allow the word to go through its process in your life? Don't let Satan steal the word so that he can kill your faith and destroy your life. You see, because he'll try to separate you from your leaders, from, from this home right here where we're sitting. He'll try to divide you with lies because if he can get you to believe the lie, you're sold out. I'm going to take this license plate and I'm going to rip it in half. I want this license plate to represent labels, tags. Don't let your heart become hardened. Let it be pliable in the hands of the Lord. Amen. All right, let's give her a countdown. Get behind her. Encourage her. Help her out. Come on, let's make some noise. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Everyone online watching around the world, you can cheer. You can cheer at home, all the different campuses. Make some noise. Don't just sit there with your mouth closed. Open up your mouth and make some noise. Come on, let's go. Woo, let's go. Somebody, anybody, everybody scream. Woo, let's go. Come on, let's go. Hallelujah. Somebody say go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Woo, let's go, let's go, let's go. She's almost there, she's almost up. Just keep the same song on. Ray's gonna take this baseball bat and he's gonna attempt to break this bat over or under his leg. Come on, Ray. Come on, Ray. Woo, come on, honey. Go, come on, push. Come on, Ray. I mean, you know the struggle's real, but he gives you the grace and the strength to make it through. Come on, Ray. Come on. Yes! Woo! All right. Woo! Praise God. Everyone say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, as my wife was sharing how the accuser of the brethren, Satan, comes and he tries to steal the word. He tries to take the word. And if you allow the enemy to take your word, which as you just heard my wife share so very eloquently, when you allow the enemy to take the word, come on, he's going to take your future. Come on. He's going to come after your plan. He's going he's gonna, he's gonna to come after your health. If you don't have the word embedded in your spirit, come on. Not only must the word be in your heart, but the word has got to be in your lips. Come on. That's when, the word of, that's when the word of God comes alive. When we begin to speak the word, declare the word, that word comes alive. And even if we look at the life of Jesus, when he was tempted by Satan, what did he say? He told the devil, he says, it is written. It is written. So he was showing us the strategy for war against the enemy. He was showing us the blueprint for battles that we face when the enemy comes against us. He was showing us how to properly address the enemy when he comes against our mind. We have to be prepared. We have to be vigilant. We have to be unyielding, standing firm, fortified, mightily in the Word of God, which reminds me of Matthew chapter 14. Very quickly, Jesus' disciples are with Jesus, and they're out in a remote place. The crowd 
follows him. It's getting late. And they realize, the disciples said, hey, the people, they need something to eat. They need some nourishment. And so most of you know the story. Most of you know the story. There was a little boy with loaves and fishes, and Jesus did what Jesus, what he would do, right? He multiplied the fish and the loaves. And so here are the disciples witnessing this miracle. The disciples, you could say it was a great church service. How often do we come to church? We have very powerful church services, man. The Spirit of God is moving mightily. People are being healed. People are being delivered. People are being set free. Man, we're in the, we're in the service, and, it, and it's sometimes when you have those kind of services, sometimes it's hard to leave. It's hard to leave because the presence of God is just, is just in the atmosphere. And so Jesus immediately tells the disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake. And so what Jesus told the disciples, get into the boat. So what was Jesus saying? Jesus, he actually gave them a word. He says, get into the boat. We're going to the other side. And so the disciples, I can imagine, they're talking amongst each other. Talk about, man, look at what Jesus did. Man, what a powerful service. They get in the boat. And so most of the disciples on the boat, they, they've been around bodies of water. You have Peter on the boat. He's an experienced professional fisherman. And so they get in the boat. And they set out. They set out across the water. They're feeling good from the service, from the, from the miracle service they just had. And so they set out, and they're in the boat, and they get to the middle of the lake, and all of a sudden, the waves begin to pick up. The wind, the, the wind became very boisterous, and all of a sudden, they get in a panic state. How many of us do we get in a panic state when all of a sudden, things around us begin to shift? When all of a sudden, we forget about the Word of God, because what the disciples did, what the disciples did was they actually forgot about the Word that Jesus, has given, that Jesus had given them. And so by this time, it's pitch black, it's dark. And I just want to encourage you here this after this, this after this morning. Never forget in the dark the word that God has spoken to you in the light. I said never forget in the dark times of life the word of God, the word that he has given you in the light. So the disciples are on the boat. It's getting pitch black. It's pitch black. The wind is picking up. The, 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 rains are, the, the waves are just raging back and forth, beating up against the boat. The back, the boat is cricking, it's cracking, breaking apart. And they are literally fearing for their life. They think they're going to die. But then all of a sudden, you see, Jesus, one thing I forgot to mention was Jesus, when he, when he gave the disciples the word, Jesus went up into the mountains. And when he was up in the mountain, he was praying. But I believe what Jesus was doing, he was actually interceding. So whatever storm you may be going through, because I believe there's three types of people in this room that are sound on my voice. Either you're getting ready to go through a storm, either you're in the middle of a storm, or there are those who are getting ready to come out of a storm. But I want to encourage you by saying this. If you want to see what you've never seen, you have to be willing to do what you've never done. I said, if you want to see what you've never seen, you've got to be willing to do something you've never done. And so Peter, I believe, I believe Peter, he looked, he looked across the world because Peter was in expectation. So you've got to have an expectative spirit. You've got to have an expectative spirit. You have to know that you know that you know that why you're going through what you're going through, that God is going to give you a word. He's going to deliver you. And so, Peter, so Jesus is coming on the water. Jesus gets close to the boat. Peter looks out. He just sees a vague shadow. But Peter, in the original translation, says this to Jesus. This is what he communicates to Jesus. He says, Jesus, since it is you, give me a word. Come on, somebody. He says, Jesus, since it is you, give me a word. And most of you know, the rest, you know the rest of the story, the rest of the text. And so Jesus actually tells Peter, he says, simply says, come. And so when Peter makes his way, he's pushing, him, he's pushing past the disciples, and he's climbing up on the edge of the boat, and he, he's fearful on the inside. But yet and still, he know he heard Jesus gave him a what? Jesus gave him the word to come. And so as Peter steps out of the boat, as Peter walks on the water, Peter's not only walking on the water, Peter is actually walking on the word. He steps out, he's walking on the word, but then all of a sudden, Peter's walking on the word, he's walking on the water, but all of a sudden, he begins to pay attention to his surroundings. He begins to pay attention to the waves. He begins to pay attention to the wind. And what happens? He begins to sink. Maybe you're in a low place here this, this morning. I want to tell you tonight, I want to tell you this morning that even as, even as the hand of grace, as Jesus reached out, Peter cried out, Jesus, save me. What happened? The hand of grace reached down and picked Peter up. You might be in a low place here this morning, 
But I guarantee if you'll reach out to Jesus, if you'll call out to Jesus, if you'll say, Jesus, give me a word. I need a word for my household. I need a word for my marriage. I need a word for my children. He's going to give you, he's going to give you a word. The hand of grace is going to take you out of that situation. The hand of grace is going to pull you up out of that muck and that miry pit. If you'll just only believe and act on the word of God. Come on, somebody. Give Jesus a big mighty hand clap of praise. All right, right now I'm going to take this horseshoe and I'm going to bend it all around. I'm going to bend it all the way around. You guys cheer, scream, shout, holler. Let's go. Here we go. Those of you watching online as well, come on, let us hear you through the airwaves. Come on, Ray. Those listening by radio, Ray is taking a steel uh, horseshoe, bending it into the shape of a heart. Come on, Ray. Go, 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 go. Come on, Ray! Come on, Ray! Come on, honey! Come on, Ray! Woo! Push! Push! Woo! Come on, Ray! Woo! Wow. It's all about the heart. Is your heart in the right place. When your heart's in the right place, it doesn't matter the storm or the trial. Even as Ray said, Peter said, Jesus, since it's you, give me a word to come. It doesn't matter what the storm looks like. You see, Peter had one thing in common with Jesus at this moment. He walked on water too because he acted on the word. And then the minute you take your eyes off the word, you'll begin to sink. We got to keep our eyes and our hearts on the word because God has called us to be fishers of men. And when we take our eyes off the word, we forget the call and the word that's planted in our hearts. And we just want to take a moment and pray with you. I'm going to ask Pastor Pearson to come up. We want to pray with you this morning. Maybe your heart has been that stony soil Satan has been stealing the word and your heart has been hardened because of things that have happened in life. You feel like it's God's fault and why would God let this happen to you? We live in a fallen world and maybe you don't realize it, but it's him carrying you through the storm right now. Maybe you have been that shallow person. You've just been an emotional playing the game, coming to church but living the party life outside. And you're coming to church, and after you leave here, you're going to go get high. Ain't the life God has for you. Or maybe you're the, the one that is choking the word out because of the deceitfulness. You're allowing Satan to steal the word and kill your faith and destroy your life. But today, you want to give it all to Jesus. I'm going to ask Pastor Pearson to come. And if you want to give your heart to Jesus, we want to pray with you. We want to give you that opportunity here today. Amen. Amen. Wow. Come on, let's give Ray and Janet a great hand this morning. Thank you so much. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much. Amen. Were you blessed? Isn't that incredible? Amen. Remember, don't try any of that at home, please. But we're going to pray together. I wonder if we could all stand to our feet. We're going to just ask the Lord to do a work within our lives and within our hearts. Amen. And I'm going to ask us just to close our eyes. Even those who are watching on DSTV, those who are watching online. Forget about everything else happening around you. Because today, God wants to restore our hearts. We don't want to continue living, as you heard this morning, we don't want to continue living in a place where the enemy keeps stealing the word that God deposits in our lives, always causing us to be unfruitful. But we're going to be more fruitful than ever before because we are going to be determined to have pure hearts and to prioritize God's will and purpose for our lives. 
And so I'm going to ask you to pray there where you are. You know where you find yourself. And we're going to pray as David prayed in Psalm 51 where he said, Lord, give me a pure heart. Give me a clean heart. Give, have mercy on me. Forgive me where I've put other things as a priority above you. Forgive me where there's been wickedness and iniquity in my life. But today, Lord, I'm trusting you for a supernatural change within me. I don't want to walk out of this place the same. So if you need to lift up your hands, whatever you need to do, come on church. Let's pray to the Lord and ask Him to work in our hearts this morning. Father, we come before you today and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we ask you to work within our lives and forgive us, O oh God, where we've allowed the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, where we've allowed our own desires to dictate our lives, our decisions, our lifestyles. Lord, come into our hearts. Wash us in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that today you heal the brokenhearted. Thank you that today we can leave the past behind us. You restore us back to the place of your love, your will. You restore us back to the place of living in your purpose. Thank you, Jesus, that right now you are healing hearts, you are restoring hearts, you are breaking the chains that the enemy has put in our lives, you are breaking every stronghold. Thank you, Lord, that through your anointing you are setting the captive free right now. Receive the freedom of the Lord. Receive the healing of the Lord. Receive His restoration as we repent from living in iniquity, living half-baked Christian lives where we have lost our faith. Father, thank You that You forgive us. Lord, where we have been living out of our own strength, thank You, Lord, that You remove that iniquity out of our lives. You remove our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. Today, Lord, we cry out for Your mercy your mercy and your grace upon our lives. We don't want to continue the same, but we know that you have so much more in store for us. Won't you just pray this with me, church, and those who are watching, say with me, Holy Spirit, look at the depths of my heart. Remove the deepest sin. Wash me clean of all the iniquity. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you strengthen me to endure, to remain steadfast in your righteousness. I know, Lord, you have so much more for me, so much more for my family. Today I repent. I turn to you and I commit everything to you. Let your word be the source of my strength, the source of my joy. And I know that nothing is too difficult. Nothing is impossible for you. I will be fruitful more than ever before. In Jesus' name. And there we are. Just thank the Lord for His mercy in your own words. Thank the Lord for His grace in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I wonder if you could just keep your eyes closed. We're going to close the service, but I want to do one more prayer with us this morning. If you are here today, whether you are watching on TV, whether you are connecting online or at any of our campuses, I want to give you an invitation this morning and a, and a special opportunity if you know that your life is not right with the Lord and you have never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that special opportunity right now, an invitation to surrender your life to Him. We have many people who go to church, but they don't want Jesus. They just want forgiveness without the change. They don't want to turn away from their lifestyle of unrighteousness and self-gratification and selfish ambition. They simply just want to have a clear conscience to think that, well, God has forgiven me. And in the modern church, we know that it's very normal to hear messages where people can receive grace without change. But that is not the true gospel of Christ. 
if you come to the Lord and you decide to follow Jesus, but you have a genuine heart, you have a pure faith that says, I am tired of living in sin. I'm tired of living with this wicked heart. But today, I want to turn to you, Lord, and I want to follow you. I want to commit my life to you. When you have that genuine, sincere faith, that is when the Holy Spirit comes into your life and He transforms you. God doesn't change people who aren't serious about following Him and pursuing His purity, His holiness, and His righteousness. God knows when someone is just looking for a free pass to heaven or looking for a clear conscience and they come to church and they say, God bless me, but they don't want to live in the righteousness of God. They just want things to be easy on earth. You are not a child of God if you have that type of agenda. But if you are here today and you are serious about surrendering your life to Christ, that's when a supernatural change takes place in your life and you'll never be the same again. That's when every chain is broken of, o, o, over your life. That is when you are removed from the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of light. When you make a genuine decision from a pure heart to say, Jesus, I believe in you and today I commit to follow you with all that I have. Many people go to church, but they are not born again. Many people call themselves Christians, but they don't live in the freedom of Christ. But today, if you are here and you say, I want to be born again. I want God to be in my life. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God. I want His forgiveness, His freedom, and I want to walk with Him for the rest of my days. I know that God has been speaking to you in your heart. And this is the moment to answer his call. And I know your life will never be the same again. So if you want to make that decision, if you want to say that prayer, to say, I want to be a child of God, I'm going to ask you when I count to three to lift up your hand. And we're going to pray that prayer together right now. Forget about those around you. This is between you and the Lord. It doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your culture, doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter how much you have in the bank account. But when you say yes to the Lord, He moves in and you'll never be the same. And so if you say that is me with no one looking around, quickly lift up your hand. One, two, three. Put it up high and we're going to pray together. I see all those hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On the side, the middle, at the back. I see all those hands. Thank you. So many hands. You can put your hands down. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask one more time. Maybe you backslidden. You know what I'm talking about. You used to be on fire for God when you were younger, but it's gone dead. It's become religious hypocrisy. But you say, I have faith that God can resurrect His Spirit in my life today. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Don't be too proud to say, well, I know how church is. I'll do it in my own time. No, take a step into when God is calling you. Because he is ready to move right now in this place. And so I'm going to ask one more time. If you've not lifted up your hand, but you want to recommit your life and you know you need to be a part of this, I want to give you one more opportunity. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. God is calling you now. Don't reject the Lord. And so if you haven't lifted up your hand, but you say, I want to make that decision, quickly do it right now. One, two, three. Put your hand up. Last opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I see all those hands. Thank you. Thank you at the back. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You can put your hands down. Now I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. We're about to close the service. If, you, if you've lifted up your hand, I want you to grab your personal belongings. If you are at any other campus, grab your personal belongings because we're about to close the service. And I'm going to ask you to take a bold step so we can pray together. If you lifted your hand, quickly step out of your seat into the aisle, come stand in front with me so we can pray together. And I know God is going to do the miracle in your life. Come on, quickly come to the front. Let's give them a hand, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, let's give them a hand as they come. Amen. For those of you in front, I'm so proud of you. I want you just to close your eyes. Church, we're all going to pray this prayer together. Those who are online, if you're making this decision as well, watching at home, watching at work, traveling, wherever you are, listening on radio, I want you just to put your hand on your heart and say this with all that you have. Say with me, Jesus, here I am. Today I decide to answer your call. I need you, Lord. And today, I surrender my life to you. And I decide to put my life in your hands. Jesus, you are my Lord, my God, my Savior. And I thank you that you change me right now. You forgive me all my sin. You give me a new heart. You break every chain. You set me free from the power of darkness and you fill me with your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, from this moment, I can declare, I leave my old life behind. This is a new start, a new day, a new life, a new beginning. I am a child of God. I am born again. And I know you love me, you lead me, and you never forsake me. You have a plan for my life. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, shout amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 triple one two three four five or log on to my 3c.tv or you could write to us at p.o box 10508 centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my 3c.tv if you need prayer sms the word pray followed by your prayer request to triple three four seven and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days if you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.